Welcome back to Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a comedy, drama film from 2018, titled Champions. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. It's another morning in Spain and Marco is starting it with the wrong foot. When he leaves his home, he finds a traffic officer Marin leaving a parking ticket on his car window. Instead of accepting his mistake, he insults Marin for being disabled and discards the ticket before driving away. Marco is assistant coach for an important basketball team that is playing today, but things continue to go wrong there. His mother hasn't come to see him, as usual, the team is playing horribly, and the coach won't listen to Marco's suggestion to improve their gameplay. Getting increasingly irritated, Marco begins insulting the coach, which gets him kicked out of the court. Marco refuses to accept this and pushes the coach, almost starting a fight, but the men are quickly separated and Marco is forced to leave while the crowd boos him. The incident appears on the news later, and Marco sees them on the TV at the bar he's getting drunk at. Afterward, he drives while inebriated and breaks a police car side mirror, making things worse when the officer pulls him over and Marco hits the police car with his own. The whole incident sends him to spend the night in jail, and the next morning, he's put on a quick trial. Judge Victoria reads all the charges, which include damaging police property, driving drunk, insulting the officer, and resisting arrest, and Marco complains against half of them, which irritates the judge, who is tempted to add contempt to the list. As punishment, he will have to pay for all the damage he's caused, his driving license will be suspended for two years, and he'll have to do community work for three months, otherwise, the alternative is spending a year and a half in jail. After the trial is done, Marco goes back to work, only to find out he's been fired, his attitude has been a problem for a while and this has been the last straw. The next day, Marco learns what his community work assignment is, he'll have to couch a basketball team formed by players with intellectual disabilities. Once again, Marco protests and uses quite offensive language to refer to these people, earning him more dislike from Victoria. Later, while telling his mother Amparo about it, she doesn't let him drink wine as if he was a kid that couldn't control himself. When Marco gets a call and sees it's from his ex, he ignores it, but Amparo wishes the two of them would make up because she's tired of having her son living in her house again. Marco's ex is Sonia, who works at a uniform store and keeps daydreaming about the idea of having her own children every time she sees a kid on the streets. The next day, Marco goes to the community center he'll be working at, which is in a rather sorry state. The director, Julio, is honored to have such an important public figure with them and explains their basketball team barely feels like a team at all because they keep losing their coaches. He also thinks Marco has volunteered to be there and that he is a friend of Victoria's, whose nephew is part of the team. Marco's original plan is to only train an hour once a week, but when Victoria calls to check things are going well, she scolds him for doing the minimum, so he has no other choice but to change the schedule to two hours of training every Tuesday and Thursday plus matches on Saturdays. Afterward, Marco meets the members of the team, Juanma, Sergio, Jesus, Benito, Fabian, Roman, Manuel, Victoria's nephew Paquito, and Marin, the traffic officer. Roman is a good player that quickly shows Marco he knows what he's doing, but the other eight are a complete disaster. They can't understand direct instructions because they take them too literally, derail every conversation with silly arguments, and barely know how to hold a ball. Benito, for example, keeps trying to shoot the ball from across the court while looking the other way, only causing the ball to hit the furniture. Not to mention Marco doesn't know how to deal with the quirks of their disabilities. Sergio sometimes freezes with his mouth open and they have to wait for him to come back. Juanma keeps on trying to hug Marco while smelling terrible because he doesn't like to shower. Paquito sometimes speaks in mumbled noises, and Marin wears formal shoes and a head protector. After the training session is done, Marco goes to complain to Julio, saying that these guys aren't normal and don't even know how to run. Julio reminds him that nobody gets to decide what normal is, and besides, they don't expect to win any tournaments, they just want to feel like a team and be able to participate at all. If they don't know how to run, then Marco should start there. A few hours later, Marco goes to a bar to have a drink with his friend and former co-worker Ivan. He confesses he and Sonia haven't spoken in a while, and after repeatedly commenting what a pity that is because Sonia is very hot, Ivan tells Marco he should have some fun and get a new lover because Sonia probably already has one. The next training session, Marco decides to go back to the basics like running, but even this proves to be difficult. When he tells the team to follow the line on the floor, they do it so literally that they don't turn at the corners and run out of the room. Getting really frustrated with the team, after practice is over, Marco goes to see Victoria and accuses her of having used her position to assign a renowned coach to train her nephew. But Victoria quickly proves her wrong, she explains she doesn't choose the destinations, if it had been up to her, she would have sent Marco to a hospital to work with disabled people that are now in wheelchairs because of irresponsible drunk drivers. The next morning, a very excited Julio wakes up Marco at 6.30 in the morning to tell him the team has been able to sign up for the local competition, thanks to finally having a proper coach. Meanwhile, Yvonne pretends to bump into Sonia by accident when he's actually in the area on purpose to talk to her. He's a bit disappointed to hear Sonia doesn't remember him, but he still sticks to his plan, 
He tells her all the things that have been going on in Marco's life, then asks her to join him for a drink under the excuse he's there to comfort her. Sonia only accepts to go to the bar on Saturday, which is the day Yvonne usually hangs out with Marco, and she asks Yvonne not to tell Marco she'll go too so he can't avoid her anymore. However, Yvonne wants to be alone with her, so he texts Marco to cancel. Between this and a bad article about him in the newspaper, Marco is feeling rather lonely, so he tries his best to concentrate on the training for the tournament because he hates losing. Sergio ends up breaking the lights, but at least the team is starting to understand Marco's instructions better now. After practice is over, he talks to Roman privately, telling him the team is pathetic but he isn't like the others. Roman doesn't take these words well and leaves without saying anything or even letting Marco finish whatever he has to say. Later at home, Marco pretends to be asleep to avoid his mother's questioning, but she comes closer anyway just to check if he's been drinking. Amparo tells him he should care about his team more and reminds him that his old school coach didn't believe in him either, which is why she had a talk with him and slapped him. Marco is shocked to hear this and understands now that's the reason why he was expelled from the team, but Amparo insists it was because the coach couldn't see how talented he was, which Marco finds ironic because she's never seen him played in her life. Little by little, training sessions start getting better, the team can handle the ball properly at least. Roman hasn't shown up though, and Marco is upset to hear from Julio that he quit the team. While complaining about the team again, he sees Benito get on a scooter and drive perfectly, which surprises him. Julio reminds him he shouldn't judge the team for their disabilities because they all have lives and are capable of many things. Benito lives alone and works in a restaurant, Fabian works as a gardener and takes excellent care of the plants, Jesus is a mechanic that even takes apprentices and has his own band, Paquito and Sergio work in packaging departments at factories, and Juanma works in a shelter. But that's not the reason why he smells, he almost drowned as a kid, so now he's afraid of water. Meanwhile, Sonia continues to deal with her co-worker's eternal rants. Today he's complaining about his sister, who wanted to borrow his caravan, but he refused because he's sure she would break it. However, he admits he would one day lend it to Sonia because he knows she would never ask for it. The day of their first tournament match finally comes, and Marco has to make a great effort to make the team understand they must wear the blue uniform, not the red. In the end, Sergio and Jesus wear red anyway, and Benito doesn't show up because his boss didn't agree to let him out early and continues to treat him like dirt. There are various mishaps during the match and Marco gets jealous of the other team's couch because he directs them with proper basketball terms, so he starts doing the same. This prompts Marin to point out they understand him better when he speaks clearly and directly to them. The team ends up losing, but at least they don't make an embarrassment out of themselves. After the match, Marco goes to his usual bar and is surprised to find Yvonne there, since in theory, he couldn't come. Sonia arrives shortly after two, and Yvonne lets them speak in private. She's been worried about Marco because he won't answer her calls and Marco finally admits he was afraid of talking to her, he left their home because he wanted to leave on his own terms instead of waiting for her to kick him out. Sonia doesn't understand why he thought she would do such a thing since she adores him, but after having a sweet moment, the reason quickly comes to light. When Sonia mentions wanting to have a baby with his eyes, he gets angry because he thinks she came to pressure him on the subject, since she knows he doesn't want to have kids. She calls him a Peter Pan that runs from responsibilities and refuses to grow up, and in turn, Marco calls her a failed actress that only knows how to work in her mother-in-law's shop. Hurt, Sonia leaves the bar and refuses to answer his calls when he tries to contact her later. Marco concentrates on training the team, which is showing great improvement, now they're able to pass and shoot the ball without much trouble. One afternoon, they find a mouse in the shower and Juanma wants Marco to save it. Instead of doing so, Marco reminds him that he's the animal expert and the only one that can help the poor mouse, so he manages to put Juanma under the shower regardless of his fear. Juanma soon gets used to it and even begins using soap, coming to accept he does like washing up. After he's clean, Marco finally accepts a hug from him. While their first match was in their own court, for the next one they must travel to the opposite team's place, but the community center doesn't have any kind of transport, so they'll have to take the bus. That day they'll also get to meet Roman's replacement, Calantes, a short girl with a big attitude. She's rude, quick to curse, and wastes no time in calling Marco a spoil sport. Once again, Benito couldn't come because his boss wouldn't give him the free time, and during the bus ride, Juanma entertains himself by singing, annoying the rest of the passengers. The match itself starts rather poorly, the opposite team has a star player that Marco can't believe is disabled. Calantes is sure she can stop him, so Marco allows her to play, but her tactics are dirty, her plan to stop this player isn't defensive, it's actually kicking him in the groin. Such plan may be unfair and immoral, but Marco can't argue with the efficacy because with that player out of the game, they managed to obtain their first victory. On their trip back, the team is high on adrenaline and becomes extra annoying. Calantes, Manuel and Fabian tease Marco because Sonia doesn't answer his texts and his mother doesn't come to see the games, Paquito keeps bothering the driver, Juanma keeps on singing, Marin pukes in a paper bag, and when Sergio's spitball hits the driver instead of his friend, the man finally is done with them and leaves them on the side of the road. 
Getting frustrated as well, Marco decides to give up on them. When he arrives home, Marco decides to visit Sonia and is shocked to hear groaning coming from his old room. For a moment he thinks she's with a new lover, but turns out she's just practicing boxing. As soon as they see each other, they begin arguing, and Sonia is disappointed to hear Marco is already quitting because he doesn't want to be like a father for grown men that behave like kids. When she hears about all the excuses he is not to travel to the next matches, Sonia offers herself as their driver, promising to borrow her co-worker's caravan. Now they have their own vehicle, their trips are much more fun. They play games, sing, chit-chat, and overall bond while on the road, and Sonia is quickly accepted by the team. Sometimes she has advice for the game tactics, and while Marco at first isn't happy to be told what to do, he begins listening and realizing he can depend on her. Soon their relationship begins to heal, and the team starts to win every match. The news begins covering their success and even after the mandate 90 days are over, Marco stays with the team. The only issue they're having is that Benito is still not allowed to join them during official games. Their winning has gotten the attention of a very special person, Roman, who sometimes comes by to watch them play. Marco's old boss also comes to watch a game, and surprisingly, he seems to know Roman. One day after the game is over, Marco approaches Roman and apologizes for what he said that day ages ago. The team has made it to the finals and he would like Roman to play with them, but he leaves without giving Marco an answer. Afterward, he talks to Sonia to ask her to get back together, and Sonia only accepts if he agrees to expand their family. Marco still hesitates because a baby is a delicate subject, and he's afraid that since they're in their 40s, the kid could be born with a disability. Upset, Sonia leaves, and Marco is then approached by Marin, who overheard the conversation. He understands not wanting to have a disabled child, but he thinks any kid in his situation would be lucky to have a father like Marco. When they return home, Marco is met with more bad news, the team can't play the final match because it's on the Canary Islands, which entails a very expensive hotel and a trip by plane. Julio has already explained this to the team and believes they understand, but the truth is, their mood is down and they go through their daily routines with a very depressing attitude. Marco refuses to give up and goes to see Sonia, saying he needs an actress and that he has a plan. After borrowing some police uniforms from the shop, the two of them pretend to be officers and pay a visit to Benito's boss, claiming to have proof that he's been mistreating Benito. Desperate not to lose his business, the man accepts to allow Benito to go to the matches and to pay a high fine, and this is the money Marco uses to take the team to the finals. Julio, Sonia and even Roman go with them. When they arrive at the hotel, the team learns about Marco's fear of elevators because of an accident he had when he was a child. Following the same way he pushed Juanma into the shower, the team pushes Marco into the elevator with them to cure his fear. At first, Marco panics, especially when one of the boys presses the wrong button and the elevator starts going down very fast. But when they finally come out, everyone laughs at the prank, and Marco can only join them in their glee. Later, Marco calls his mom, who he believes is on a spiritual retreat. However, he can hear her voice nearby, and he's shocked to find out she's actually in the same hotel, enjoying a vacation with her domestic worker. The next day, on their way to the game, Julio tells Marco that Roman is a Paralympic medalist, but his medal was taken away and he almost ended his life because of how badly he took it. The year he won, it was discovered that some players weren't disabled, so the organization took back all the medals, including Roman's. This is why he doesn't trust coaches nowadays. The final match finally begins, and both teams play extremely well, keeping a draw on the scoreboard for the entire game. When there are only 10 seconds left for the match to end, Marco's team needs only two points to at least finish with a tie. But Benito, instead of doing a safe move for those two points, goes to the opposite end of the court and tries for a three-pointer. Unfortunately, he misses, and their opponent wins the tournament. Marco begins getting upset but it doesn't last long because his team isn't sad at all, getting second place is a huge deal for them, so they are celebrating anyway since this is an accomplishment to be proud of. His mood also improves when he finds out his mother has finally come to see him and she's proud of him, so when Sonia comes by to congratulate him as well, he tells her he's ready to be a father, and the couple gets back together. Afterward, the team goes to spend some time on the beach, so Marco takes the chance to talk to Roman and tell him he's a champion even if he doesn't have a medal anymore. Touched by the gesture, Roman shares that he used to play with a major league team, but he was kicked out after he had a car accident with his drunk uncle. He also had to quit college and his dream to be an architect, but he's happy to have this team now. Some days later, once Marco is back in his house with Sonia, he receives a call with an incredible job offer, coach for the national team. He obviously accepts, but when he tells Julio later, he feels awful. Julio tells him not to worry because he's already done a lot for the team and stayed more than the assigned 90 days, so they will totally understand his decision. Marco leaves without saying goodbye to the team because he doesn't think he could stand seeing their sad faces. However, as soon as he reaches the streets, he finds himself being followed by the team. They want to thank him for everything and wish him good luck in his new job, making Marco cry.
Teasing him for his tears, the team gives Marco a group hug as a final goodbye. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.